Mr. Firebush, you have lived and worked as an artist in England for over 60 years, yet you were born in Germany, a country you left at the age of 35. Why did you leave? I left because Hitler made life impossible for an artist. At that time, one didn't know yet that you meant to kill all of us. I left simply in order to find a place where I could work freely. I noticed the change in public opinion in the treatment that we Jews received mm. and it seemed impossible for me to go on and I was disgusted with it all. And so as my wife-to-be was English, we decided to come here. Can I go back to your training as an artist in Germany? In 1918, after two years serving in the German army on the Russian front, you returned to Germany at the end of the First World War to study medicine. Yet after two terms, you gave this up to study painting in Munich and later Berlin. What made you give up medicine to study painting? Was it your experiences in the First World War or something else? No, it was quite simply that I always wanted to be a painter from earliest childhood on. At the wish of my father, I half-heartedly started studying medicine, but painted the, that while all the time, hardly attended any lectures, but painted instead. You travelled to Italy in 1921 and in 1923 continued to study in Paris in the studios of André Lotte. You also exhibited your work at, for, for the first time in Paris. What did studying in Italy and later Paris offer you that maybe Germany didn't? Studying in Italy had the greatest influence on me. That whole period style uh, filled me with love. Tell us a little bit about how the Nazis made life uncomfortable for artists. They did not like communists, they did not like Jews, they did not like social democrats, they did not like abstract art. What did they like? <coughs> what the Nazis liked was romantic art the way they saw it. A mixture of romantic art and folk art. Naturalism of the most blatant and vulgar type. Always clinging to the surface only. Nazi art was produced by very poor artists who were jump, suddenly jumped up into prominent positions to look at their work really gave one pain, a pain in the neck. It was supposed to be natural and, and re real. It was nothing of the sort. It was immensely enlarged, vulgar, yes, n n no, not naturalism, a sort of classical art pushed to the extreme and executed with, without a trace of talent. Their emblem became 
a group of a man and a wife striding forward with outstretched arms. It was the infamous Degenerate Art Exhibition of 1937 that represented the culmination of the Nazis' denigration of modern art. Artists such as Schwitters, Kokoschka, Hartfield and indeed yourself were shown amid huge propaganda orchestrated by Joseph Goebbels on the personal instructions of Hitler. Ironically, this exhibition has become the most important and extensive exhibition of great 20th century art ever seen. By the time of the Degenerate Art Exhibition, you had been in England five years or so. How did you get to know about the Degenerate Art Exhibition and your work within it? And what was your reaction when you heard about this? I only heard vaguely of the Antarctica Kunst Exhibition and from time to time I heard that a picture of mine was rediscovered. Oh, and one funny thing happened comparatively late. Uh, a picture of mine, which amongst many I had had to leave behind, was somewhere rediscovered and sold by the man who discovered it to, to other people. It was a very large painting of three dancing circus figures, a columbine in the center, a piero on one side, um, another masked figure on the other, but they were holding arms, the three of them, and dancing in step. But the man who had bought it, or found it, had cut off the legs, the lower half of the picture, so that you just had three bodies, dancing bodies, down to the hips. The man who then took it, bought this picture and heard that I had painted the legs, wrote to me, could I paint new legs to stick <laughs> onto this canvas? <laughs> and I told him, no, I couldn't do that, but I was prepared to repaint the whole thing again. And I did that. And then the owner of the, of the half paintings came and took the whole thing, but didn't want to pay me for it. <laughs>